Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the start of a brand new week. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling very artistically inspired. I'm gearing up for the holiday season, so I have a lot of travel coming up. And unfortunately, I got a cold again this week, um, but I'm hoping that that means I have gotten it out of my system and I can travel without fear of getting sick because the last several years for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I have gotten very sick with a cold because of all of the people traveling and all the new germs. And it really sucks when you're taking time off to spend time with friends and family and then you're not feeling your best. It's actually the worst feeling. But I can say that I am feeling better now. I have made myself a homemade chicken and bean soup and have just been drinking a lot of tea and cuddling a lot with my dog Cedar. And I'm very fortunate that the weather's been kind of gloomy and he's also wanted to just cuddle up with a blanket and spend time painting together. So it's really been a cozy week over here for me. It almost feels like I'm not in Texas. It feels like I'm back in the Midwest, which I love. So to start the week, I wanted to do something kind of different in the sketchbook. So far, I've been filling up the pages in their entirety, and I thought it'd be interesting to not use the whole page and have these contrasting these spreads where there's a sliver instead of using the whole space and so I knew I wanted a rectangle and I really loved that landscape I did earlier in the sketchbook so I wanted to give it another go but a different twist on it so I first did the rectangle and then just decided to fill it in with a landscape and I didn't base it on anything I made it up as I went but I decided to shape it around these long drives that I would do going cross country from Michigan to California. And uh, several times I took the 66 and one of my favorite parts of the drive is the desert where it's just flat, distant mountains and the long straight road in front of you where you're going straight for such a long time. And I know that sounds really boring and monotonous, but there's something so beautiful about the stillness and something that's been an inspiration for me recently is the concept of the energy in stillness or the movement in stillness and how from a macro lens, you know, something is still, but when you really break it down to the parts and pieces, there is so much movement and energy and production happening in stillness. And so it's sort of that tension between what's being perceived and what's actually going on. So the shape of this rectangle is sort of serving as the driver window that I'm looking through when I'm driving and looking out to the horizon. And I really love the way that it turned out. And here we are on Tuesday, everybody, the second day of the week. I wanted to get back to a character today since I started the week with the landscape and I wanted to do one of the caterpillar characters but getting a little more movement in their bodies. So far they've been more of a chrysalis I would say and I wanted to play with a little bit more of a worm, an inchworm vibe. I'm interested in playing with story more as I move forward with developing my art style and so I need to figure out how these creatures move and get places and what exactly are they? Are there different types? And so I'm just playing around. If I have an idea and I want to explore it, I simply do a spread for it. So I was just thinking about the worm and how is it traveling? Where is it going? For this spread, I'm using my Holbein acrylic gouaches again. These are just my absolute favorite. I've said that before. They're my tried and true. And I'm going to continue to use them throughout the whole sketchbook keeping it simple with just a few colors of this beautiful gouache, my standard Sharpie pen, my Jelly Roll white pen, and I think that's about that's about it. I also picked up some sparkly pens that I'm gonna plan on using. I did the perimeter of the box for yesterday. I did the frame in that silver pen and it looks beautiful. It doesn't quite show up on camera depending where, on where the lighting is set up but it just adds this other fun, magical element that I just started playing with. I hope you guys are enjoying watching my process in live time like this. I sped it up a little bit and then I tried to cut out just where I was replenishing my brush so that you could sort of see how the piece takes shape. 
but for the sake of time with doing seven pieces in a week, I did do some jump cuts, but I just wanted to show you kind of my flow through the piece and something that I have really developed over the years of being an artist and making things in different capacities is how confidence shows up on the page and how if you overthink a piece or overwork a piece, in my opinion, it's actually worse. And that's the fun part of the sketchbook is that you should be being confident in your sketchbook. There's no reason for you to be hesitant. And I've actually surprised myself recently because it used to be that I would really think about a sketchbook spread. I would want it to be so good. I would go get my research. Maybe I would even trace some elements so that they looked how I, exactly how I wanted them to look. And I'd spend a lot of time in the underdrawing, the sketching to make sure that I was proud of it. But I have realized for me that this is a freaking sketchbook. Just draw it yourself with your hands. Just put the paint down. Let the strokes be large and messy. This is your place to play, not be perfect. Happy to have you here on Wednesday, everybody, for today's spread. I wanted to break it up a little bit more. I haven't yet done a spread that breaks it up into groups. So instead of flowing onto the next page, I wanted to do four mini paintings. And I wasn't sure what to do here, but I have been doing a lot of character work and scribbling in my notebook that you can kind of see off to the left. So I thought I would just do four little portraits in these different colors. And I wanted to show you a bit of my sketching process because some of these clips, the thing is already drawn on the page. So I wanted to show you a bit of, yes, I do go in there and sketch. It's just often something I do from the couch and not at my desk. Um, which is probably a bad habit, but it's just more comfortable on my lower back. So here I'm painting the first character, and I've been riding the line between fantasy and reality with some of my characters and trying to decide how they take shape. And so I thought it'd be interesting to do my little cocoon guy, but what if instead of having a little caterpillar body, the shape was being made by a headscarf and so it could be a more human-like character we don't know what the creature looks like we just kind of see the robe that it's wearing and it's been really fun for me to make artwork every day something i want to be clear about is that i'm not suggesting to other people to make art every day i'm not really doing it as a challenge anymore it's more so that I am in a season of my life where I'm at home a lot and I'm resting and I'm trying to not spend money because I'm on a budget. Having paint supplies at home, I have the ability to create these vast worlds right from my couch with supplies I already own. And so it's a way to fill my time that brings me joy that's also cost effective. I've just felt joy while painting and this drive to create. And if I wasn't in that place where I wanted to create frequently, I wouldn't be forcing myself to do so. It hasn't been a burden. It's brought me great joy. And you just need to be true with yourself and know what it is that you need at this given time. If you are going through an artistic slump and you don't have the drive to create, you should honor that. And maybe there's other ways that you can be creative. If you're tired of creating, maybe you start reading a book. Maybe you start reading the children's books that were read to you when you were a child. Anything to just get that part of your brain to light up because you really can't force creativity no matter how much you want to. Now it's Thursday and this is one of my favorite spreads. This is heavily inspired by some artists that I follow on Instagram who do these really cute illustrations where they first back paint an abstract and then they use the negative space to build out their shape. And I just love the way that it looked. I wanted to give it my own try, a little spin on what they were working with. So I first went in and did this abstract painting background. And then on top of that, I go in and I paint out the silhouette around some flowers. I've been painting a lot of flowers recently. I've been trying to figure out what exactly they look like in my style, and I haven't quite figured it out yet. 
there's a version of it that I love that has these large over exaggerated droopy leaves that come to a point at the end but then there's also this one i've been playing with which is a little bit more illustrative and it's it feels 2d and flat and it has some perky rounded leaves and they just seem a little more playful and it feels more like a textile so i'm, I'm not sure and i'm not ready to give either one up so as long as I want to keep working with them, I am going to. So today's spread is focused on them and it felt a lot like an art therapy practice. This is one of those spreads where I was truly able to just shut off my mind. Sometimes I can have a hard time making art for the sake of art or for the sake of it being pretty. I think it's because I spend too much time on social media, just consuming content and stuff about the news and what's going on in the world that I feel like I have to be making something for a purpose. You know, what is my art saying? Why am I creating it? How is this going to change the world? And I kind of laugh as I say that because although that's possible and true and there's so much power in that, it's such a disservice to put that pressure on what we're doing, especially in a sketchbook. And maybe I sound totally Looney Tunes because y'all listening don't feel that way, but sometimes I I can feel that way where I overthink and intellectualize everything I'm working on and I feel the need to be able to defend it. But I was talking to a fellow artist recently and I love the way that they described their artwork and they said, my artwork is not story driven. It's individual pieces and characters and it's just fun and I like the way that it looks and it brings people joy. And I had never heard somebody explain it just so open and honestly and be be able to say, I, I'm making this because it looks good and I want people to feel joy when they look at it and that's enough for me. And that's my lesson of the day is just calm down and take yourself less seriously. And I think now would be a good time to talk about something that I've been struggling with as I've been making so much art recently where I've been really tired and I've been feeling in my neck and body kind of pain from sitting at my desk and painting because I'll work my nine to five regular job in a desk. And then right after that, I will walk my dog and then come back to the desk and be painting again. And that would be fine if I just did one painting, but I've been really motivated lately and just making painting after painting. And next thing I know it's midnight and I have to force myself to stop. It's like I'm in this manic creative state. I've been talking with people recently, just sort of venting a little bit about this place that I'm at where I am so energetically driven, but physically exhausted. And it was brought to my attention that I need to make boundaries with myself. That sounds so silly. I never thought that I would have to make boundaries around something that I love, like a hobby, but that is what's happening. I need to schedule in time now to be done working on things. So previously, I viewed art as the thing that I love doing, and that's so true to this day, but I didn't realize that too much of a good thing is a bad thing, and I would just since I'm having fun, enjoying my artwork, I would just keep working on it until I didn't want to anymore. But that second part kind of just didn't happen. I would be painting and painting and painting and then realize that it's midnight and that's not good. And so now I'm realizing that I have to have a time where I say, okay, even if I'm in the middle of a painting, I am done at this time. I, 10 p.m., that's when I'm gonna start my night routine get ready, paint brushes down, go lay down, and I don't have to go to sleep, but I just need to take a step away from my work work and from my artwork and leave space for things like reading, watching a show, stretching, taking a bath, really just taking care of myself. The way that I knew I needed to set these boundaries is that I started to have this immense feeling that time was slipping away and that the days were passing by far too quickly. My days sort of were just blending together. Part of that's because my days were so similar, but also just I wasn't leaving any room for me to acknowledge time. I was in these focused states between work and painting. And this week, now that I've been 
baking in this time for myself, I have felt the sense of time return. Just two days left in the week and today's spread is a bit of a doozy. This is a great one to show you guys. If anyone out there is thinking my work is good, then you can enjoy this spread of the struggle and the process of learning because it does not always go uh, how you planned. And sometimes you have this image in your head of what a spread is gonna look like and then you start painting it and you get so frustrated because you think you can do what you want to do because you can picture it in your head, but you can't get that image onto the page. And so the intention for this spread was to combine those landscapes I was doing where the eggs are out in the, the valley and then also include one of my characters towards the front. And he's picking up two of the eggs and looking at them kind of confused and in wonder of what's going on. The egg shapes are sort of acting as those hay bales and i looked up a bunch of different landscapes online where the bales of hay are out in the field before any of the cattle have gotten to them they're just freshly out there but then i thought what if they were eggs and then all of the landscape would be very rounded around them and so that's what i was playing with and i wanted to sort of see how i could combine my abstract landscapes and my characters and make them feel like they're in the same world. This is sort of building towards where I want to go in the next couple months with my artistic practice. So this is like a first tasting. And it's not the design of the page that I think is the problem. It's more so that I went in and tried to freehand the character and did not like how it looked. I have a couple of renditions of spec in an egg transformative shape and I should have just traced that because that's exactly what I wanted, but I was trying to sketch a version of the spec that had narrow shoulders and could look more like an egg shape, but I just hated it. But more so the color, that bright orange I started with, was the wrong move. So I slowly went in, tried it in blue, then decided I'm just going to make it an egg in this up close perspective. So I brought in the colors from the other egg barrels and decided to paint it like that. Then I just said, yeah, screw it. It's a regular egg shape. We'll get rid of the rest of this. But I was having problems where the ink I'm using is absorbing through the paint. And let's just be happy this is a sketchbook because holy goodness, it's messy. And it just kept happening. I believe I tried two or three bouts of paint and boy, oh boy, did this Sharpie pen just keep showing up. So this is when we take it to our roots, people, our trash goblin roots, and we just put masking tape down, use that as a barrier between the ink and just paint it on down. And here we are on Sunday. We've made it all the way through the week. Today's spread, I actually am gonna do both the left and the right half of the pages. It's not technically one spread, but they kind of go together. At the end, it sort of turns into this pistachio is what I've been calling it, but I wanted to play with my egg shape, that sort of Fabergé egg, but have it cut open and revealing the hollow inside. I think this is something I would iterate on and have it crack open and be hollow on the inside, but you can see a character on the inside, sort of like a Kinder Egg style spread. The thought being that I'm not done iterating on this egg idea and I still have this drive to draw and paint these eggs. So instead of all of the pages being repetitive, I'm thinking, how can we mix it up? How can it be different? And just exploring different ways of using the egg imagery. It's okay if I don't like how it turns out, we're really just exploring the limits. And this is something that's been helping me develop my art style because some things I iterate on and I don't like it and I realize I only liked it in this specific way. As you learn what works or doesn't work for your own style, it really helps to guide what you want to make in the future. For example, the Fabergé design, that was from my other sketchbook. I randomly drew it in, just doodled it on one day, loved it, and now I've been pushing forward with it in multiple other spreads. And I don't know what that means yet, but I enjoy it and so we're keeping with it. And so you sort of, to keep, you have to keep yourself on your toes, exploring different things. Right when you feel comfortable with something, 
question why is it the specific way how can we shift it how can we move it and just keep pushing the envelope until you hate what you're doing and then come back that's the beautiful part of the sketchbook we are exploring ourselves and our voice we're finding out what we like and we don't like and we do that through experimentation some of my spreads are very repetitive like we've seen the egg in the field but each time i try to make it a little bit different or if I don't make it different, maybe I just feel like drawing a freaking egg in a freaking field and I'll paint that and then I'll look back at it and think, wow, you did three spreads of an egg in a field this week. There must be something there that you really like. What is it? Is it the shadow play, the illustrative quality of the sun? What is it specifically, the gradient on the egg? Like sometimes you have to just look back at what you've done, what you've been drawn to do and that teaches you about who you are in your art style. And if you lean more negative or you're really hard on yourself, that teaches you too. What do you hate about your artwork? What are you always upset about? And how can you let go of that and give yourself space to freely explore? The great thing about art and finding your art style is that the truth is right in front of you. And if you shut off your brain, as much as you're able to and simply focus on creating things, you, you're able to go back and you have this visual archive of where your brain has been at. It's like a journal or a diary. You, you can go back and think, I was so angry or I was so happy. I was so sad. Like you, you, There's this record of who you are in this period of time. And sometimes it's so complicated in your mind to think, what is my style? What do I want to pursue? Who am I? Because it's all in your head. But when it's in a sketchbook and you can flip through it and see it, that's how you develop your art style. You look back in your sketchbook, you see what you like, what you've been driven to create, and whatever you really, really love, you make more of that thing. And you keep doing that process. All right, guys, I just wanted to hop on to say thank you so much for watching today's video. It's been an absolute dream of mine to complete a sketchbook and be able to do one of those cool flip through videos. So I'm getting there. I have uh, just this little flat part at the bottom left. So I'm going to keep powering through. I have been so happy to have you guys keeping me accountable. And I've just been so driven to keep working in this sketchbook. So thank you all for being here. Consider subscribing, leaving a comment, giving it a thumbs up, and let me know what you want to see more of. If you had a specific spread that you really liked, mention it down below. I'd love to hear your comments and keep growing this channel together. All right, I'm going to go get coffee.